Jyoti, I just want to come to you on uh, you know whether or not uh, currently it is the right time to probably look at these IPOs in a big way. Uh, so, you know, like the IPO flows have slowed down quite a bit because of the market conditions. It's like, as you know, very cyclical. The moment markets go up, IPO flows will start coming. But, you know, at this time, you do tend to get IPOs which are coming at more attractive valuations than you do when the markets are running up. Because when markets are running up, there's a lot of uh, demand which builds up for these IPOs. Everybody's, you know, giving funding to you. So, you the valuations tend to go much higher. So, in typically you find in a depressed market, you get IPOs which come in at more attractive valuations than when the markets are, you know, at a buoyant stage. Hmm. All right. Let's talk about uh, quarter one earnings, Jyoti, and what have we built in? I mean, the regular uh, disappointments that we saw last quarter, I mean, auto for one, oil and gas the other, uh, cement uh, is the third one, metals being cyclical in nature may have a slightly weaker quarter. What's your sense? Yeah, so you know, like the headline numbers won't look that bad. The headline numbers in the sense net profit for, let's say, the nifty companies will be positive. It will be somewhere, in, you know, mid single digit to high single digit. But it will be largely led by this one sector, which is all the banks. So if you strip out the banks, then X financials, the earnings are going to be negative for the quarter for all the companies as a whole. So it's basically the corporate banks which are going to show much lower provisioning, which will show huge growth in net profits, which will really drive the earnings. I think apart from the corporate banks, probably, you know, cement is the other sector which will do well. On a year-on-year -year basis, it will show sharp growth, even on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis. And probably the third sector, there could be some select capital goods which do well. But otherwise, in general, you know, there will be a lot of disappointment. I think metals and autos are probably going to drive earnings down in a big way. Last time that we spoke, Jyoti, you mentioned that uh, amongst the pockets where you guys were bullish on was the capital goods and the CapEx revival theme. Now, this budget certainly seems to be a budget which is indicating uh, a lower cost of capital as being the principal drivers. In that scenario, could, could the capital goods space show both earnings growth as well as valuation growth over the course of the next 12 months? Yeah, so, you know, our whole theme was three. One is, you know, nobody owns these stocks. So, you know, it's a very underdone sector. Second is it's underperformed a lot. So, if you see right from 2008, the sectors got derated a lot. And so, now valuations are starting to look attractive. And third is over the next two, three years, earnings will move up sharply for this sector. Whether they do over the next one, two quarters is still debatable. But I think over the next two, three years, we're going to see a sharp earnings growth coming through in this sector. And so that was the reason we are overweight. We continue to remain overweight. Now, of course, capital goods is a very vast sector. So, you know, you have to put, pick your stocks, you have to pick your sectors, because in spite of being ca overweight capital goods, we don't think private capex is reviving in a hurry. So our theme has been built around private capex does not revive in a hurry, but there is growth in the economy. It may be slow, it may be fast, but there's volume growth which is coming up. Capacities are getting you know, build out. So as utilization levels are picking up, you're getting operating leverage, you're getting pricing power. And, you know, some of these results will probably start indicating that too. So I think over the next 12, 18 months, this is a sector which will outperform the market. Okay. Um, so capital goods, cement, you're clearly betting on the CapEx revival. What is it that you're underweight on then? Something that you were overweight, but you've turned underweight on with reasons. Yes, yeah, so see, we underweight the consumer sector. So we underweight largely on valuation. Uh, so from 2008 to today, we've seen a massive re-rating in a lot of the consumer staple names, all good quality companies, high ROEs, free cash. But we think that these levels, the valuations are just too high. And this is getting accompanied with the fact that earnings in the sector is slowing down. So if you see the last quarter, all consumer staple companies gave guidance, which was quite weak. And even this quarter, we think, is going to be weak and probably the guidance will be quite similar. So you have at one stage the earnings slowing down. On, on the other, the valuations are at like all-time highs. So I think this is one sector where, you know, you could see a derating and we are totally underweight on that. Okay. 
By the way, uh, look at Interglobe Aviation. It's recovered a bit of lost ground over the last two days. In today's session, it looked like starting off weak, but after starting off in the red, it's recovered a bit of lost ground. As I said, 22 rupees up in the green, 1377. It's a very small pocket to bet on Jyoti. But would you bet on aviation? I mean, there are only two stocks currently that you can, but both of them have some tailwinds, say for crude. Yeah, so you know, with aviation, it is, it's difficult to take like a two-year, three-year view in aviation. Uh, currently, we like it only because the industry is just consolidated with one big player going out of the way. You suddenly have all the existing players doing well, fares have shot up and you know people don't have a choice utilization levels in each aircraft is huge so currently there's a lot of good things happening in the sector so it's something which over the next six nine months looks good but beyond that you always it's a bit of a question mark in the sector Delhi Jyoti I mean uh, would would at a particular level of crude pricing other things remaining constant if crude prices were to move up maybe because of a US Iran conflict or otherwise at what levels would you want to reverse your call on aviation uh, because of crude? Yeah, so you know, like if you just see history of the aviation sector and earnings in India, outside India, globally also, crude has been a major volatile factor and so that's the reason why these companies on a consistent basis never really end up making money. So if we have crude prices going up, let's say 20-25% and they sustainably remain there, then that, that is a scenario where you know you probably want to get out of all the aviation stocks. Because you know at some point they always struggle to keep passing on the higher cost increases. Mm. Okay, that's a point well taken too. Uh, the other pocket, Jyoti, and final question from my end at least, the other pocket which is uh, you know not quite done well, uh, in the last couple of years, despite the currency looking weak at those times, that's a price pharma because of business headwinds. Now, a lot was spoken about how the U.S. pricing pressure might ease, but it's not showing any signs as well. Now, the currency is strengthening too. Uh, do you have any views here? Are you guys invested here? If not, why? If yes, why? Uh, so, you know, we don't own the big pharma. We don't own the big generic companies. What we do own is a couple of cram companies, which are you know not that big. They are among the more mid-cap names, and the reason for owning these cramps is you know they are not that much hurt by the whole generic price pressure which we are seeing in the U.S. And there is a tendency to keep getting orders because you know whoever they are supplying to are doing well in terms of volume. So otherwise, in general, we are not owning the big pharma companies which have come down quite a bit. So at some point you start thinking about it because the valuations are now not as extreme as they were. But I think you know there is a bit more structural issue in the US which is that the whole arm distribution arm over there has shrunk and so there's huge consolidation which means that even when pricing power or when the generic prices start to go up, at the moment we're seeing the fall at least has plattered out, uh, you're not going to get back to the margins you had earlier. So, you know, there will always be pressure on the Indian generic companies now because the other arm, which is the buyers, have consolidated and they are no longer as fragmented as they were earlier. All right. Jyoti, one last question. Uh, you know, we saw the Dow hitting 27,000 for the first time yesterday. Uh, global equity markets, uh, at least in the U.S., the markets have been at record highs. Uh, you know, uh, there's no if at all there is a bigger correction that comes about from there, do you see that having a, a more amplified or a magnified impact on our equity markets, considering that we've already corrected, uh, you know, about 500 points uh, pre-budget? Yeah, you know, the sad thing is, like, India has kept underperforming the global markets because, you know, I guess some part of our policy, the lack of earnings growth coming in and the fact that valuations are high. So the, our markets are also vulnerable if, you know, global markets tend to correct. My sense is we'll probably correct less than what the global markets correct. But even then, you know, absolute basis, we will go down. It will be tough to stand alone unless we start to a get earnings coming back and there are more visible signs clearly that earnings are coming back. And second is government like starts to take some measures which are pro-market, pro-business. 
सो अनलेस वी हैव वन ऑफ दीज टू थिंग्स आई थिंक इफ वी गेट अ ग्लोबल मार्केट करेक्शन इंडिया विल बी पार्ट ऑफ इट एंड दैट इज समथिंग वी कैन अवॉइड